Hey there, Star Wars fans. Welcome back to the Hyperspace Database. I'm Jonesy the Mandalorian, your host here with today's topic, the TIE Avenger. The TIE Advanced Starfighter, or TIE Avenger, was an experimental TIE Fighter variant developed by CNR Fleet Systems as a part of their TIE Fighter line, and was the culmination of many years of TIE Fighter experimentation, beginning with Darth Vader's TIE Advanced X-1 fighter. The TIE Avenger was 9.8 meters long, or 32 feet, 8 meters wide, or 26 feet, and 7.2 meters high, or 24 feet. Its maximum atmospheric speed was 1,300 kilometers per hour, or 808 miles per hour, and the ship possessed an ND9 hyperdrive system. It was armed with four heavy laser cannons and two warhead launchers, which could hold a variety of missiles. The ship was also armed with one tractor beam projector to capture ships in its grip that it had a hard time targeting. The TIE Avenger was one of the very first TIE fighters to break away from the Imperial model of quantity over quality, with the addition of a hyperdrive, deflector shields, and warheads, as well as an ejector seat. It was also faster and more maneuverable than any other existing Rebel fighter at that point in history, earning them the nickname Brights by Rebel pilots, who saw their bright potential in dogfights and other engagements. The model was a direct descendant of the famous TIE Advanced series, whose most notable member was Darth Vader's TIE Advanced X-1 with the extended fuselage and bent solar wings being the most noticeable related features. It also resembled the TIE Interceptor in its dagger-like shape of the bent solar panels. It was often compared to the famous TIE Defender, but fell just short of that ship in terms of weaponry and overall systems, as the Defender was faster and more heavily armed, though it was larger and presented its enemies with a larger target. The TIE Avenger was primarily used as a space superiority fighter, and was superior to nearly all Imperial fighters during the Galactic Civil War. The ship was very effective against enemy fighters when it made use of its tractor beam projector, which could pin a ship in place while the Avenger would pummel them with lasers and missiles. While the ship was most often used against enemy fighters, it was also called upon to make bombing runs against ground targets, as the aging TIE bomber was being phased out of Imperial service. The ship was often paired with the Alpha Class XG-1 Star Wing Assault Gunboat for hit and fade missions. Because both ships were hyperdrive capable and were heavily armed enough to take on rebel patrols and convoys, though these roles would eventually be both replaced by the multi-role TIE Defender. The TIE Avenger was developed to answer a problem that the Imperial Navy was having with the persistent Rebel Alliance. The Rebels were having great success against the standard TIE fighters with their superior X-Wing fighters and other formidable ships, and this made the Empire reconsider its philosophy that plentiful cheap fighters were better than fewer higher quality craft. Because of this new way of thinking, a new starfighter was to be developed that would meet the needs of the Empire, and so Grand Admiral Demetrius Zarin was tasked with creating such a ship. Many prototype ships were developed, such as the TIE Advanced X-1, though this ship was more expensive and less maneuverable than the standard TIE fighter, so it never went into mass production, and remained only in major use by Darth Vader himself. After the addition of a newer, smaller, more efficient hyperdrive system, the new TIE Advanced, dubbed the TIE Avenger to avoid confusion with Vader's TIE Advanced, soon came into production. While the ship was more formidable and met the expectations of the Imperial higher-ups, it was still expensive, and so it had only a limited test production run to make sure that it was indeed worth the money spent in developing them. The ship is prominently featured in the TIE Fighter series of video games, and is seen in demonstrations to Darth Vader by Admiral Zarin to get approval for the ships, which Vader grants. After a certain moment in the games, spoiler alert if you haven't played them, Admiral Zarin turns traitor and attempts to destroy the TIE Avenger factory so that he can monopolize his own TIE Avenger and Defender squadrons. Many of the TIE Avenger factories were destroyed, making the likelihood that these fighters becoming a staple in the Imperial Navy plummet to a record low. The final nail in the coffin for the TIE Avenger project would come at the Empire's defeat at Endor in Return of the Jedi, where all interest in the project was then shifted into producing the more successful TIE Defender. There are many missions in the TIE Fighter video game that feature the TIE Avenger, with one of the most famous being when an Imperial officer turned traitor tries to assassinate Imperial pilot Merrick Steele while on a training exercise. Though Steele was able to turn the tables on the rogue Imperial and bring him back to the fleet, where he was summarily executed. Fun fact, the TIE Avenger was also Merrick Steele's fighter of choice in many more battles for the Empire, chronicled through the events of the TIE Fighter video game, as well as in later battles against the Yuuzhan Vong as a part of the Imperial Remnant. The TIE Avenger was a superior TIE Fighter variant that was formidable due to its advanced speed, shielding, and hyperdrive systems, and was a front runner to be the next Imperial Super Fighter. And though that honor would fall to the TIE Defender, the TIE Avenger was known for its speed and maneuverability, 
and it was made famous by elite pilots like Merrick Steele, who destroyed many forces of the Rebel Alliance with this Imperial Space Superiority Fighter. Want to know more about great Star Wars topics just like this one? Be sure to stick around at the end for some secret trivia, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and you can check out my other videos for more great Star Wars content. Be sure to hit me up in the comments too, and you can follow the show on social media as well. I want to hear from you guys. Super special shout out to my Platinum Commander level supporter on Patreon, Uber Kaiser Sose, and my Gold Captain level Patreon supporters, Miss2003, Nick Sutphin, and Matthew Scott. Your support is super helpful in keeping the show going. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to chat with me in the comments, and we will see you in the next episode.